The 2012 Democratic National Convention took place in Charlotte, North Carolina from September 4th through 6th. President Barack Obama was nominated for another term in office, while a range of speakers defended his policies and rallied the party's base ahead of the upcoming presidential elections. While party leaders and delegates took part in the convention, thousands of activists took action against what they say are Democratic Party policies that favor the wealthy over the working class, support an unjust foreign policy, among a host of other issues. At least two dozen were arrested by police for carrying out acts of civil disobedience. Occupy activists camped out at Charlotte's Marshall and Fraser Parks for a week of protests, including the March on Wall Street South. Organizers say over 2,500 people took part, demanding banks and financial institutions be held responsible for the economic crisis, full funding for education, health care, and housing instead of war and the criminal justice system. Activists with Code Pink also carried out actions inside the convention. Ray Abelea, who carried out similar actions in Tampa at the Republican National Convention, talked about why she disrupted a speech by Maryland Congressman Steny Hoyer. As a young American taxpayer, I am appalled and shocked that both the Democrats and the Republicans continue to fund an occupation in Afghanistan, killer drones that uh, kill innocent civilians in Pakistan, Yemen, Somalia, as well as American civilians abroad felt it was important to bring this message directly to the Democratic Party tonight. So when Democratic Whip Steny Hoyer was speaking, I unfurled a banner that said, bring our war dollars home. Code Pink also unfurled a massive banner with the words, yes, we can end war, a few hours prior to President Obama's acceptance speech. Immigrants' rights advocates also made their voice heard. Dozens of activists with the No Papers, No Fear Ride for Justice took part in a one-month-long trip to advocate for immigrant rights. That culminated in Charlotte when 10 undocumented activists risked deportation by carrying out civil disobedience to protest the lack of comprehensive immigration reform and the escalating record number of deportations by the Obama administration. The, the, uh, the activists on the undocu bus are the new face of courage. These are people who have everything to lose, who are putting their livelihoods on the line to um, demonstrate courage across this country. They've continued with civil disobedience to hold our elected officials accountable for using courage on an incredibly important issue. While this year's Democratic and Republican conventions were not marked with the same level of police violence against activists and journalists witnessed four years ago, some journalists did report being harassed by police while on the job. Journalists Kevin Gostola and Steve Horn reported being threatened by police while observing and following men who they believed appeared to be undercover police officers. The Real News spoke to Steve Horn, who described the incident. What was interesting was what they were doing during the whole march, which was taking photos uh, and shooting video of these undocumented immigrants, which was very odd behavior. If you ask me, well, I didn't see any other people in the march that were close to me that spent the whole march taking pictures of other people. And as the march went on, they kept doing that, and I happened to snap photos of them and video of them just in case, again, as I mentioned before, something happened, and I wanted to have it documented. About halfway through the, the march, they stepped off, so I stepped off, and I was with a fellow journalist, Kevin Gostola of Fire Dog Lake, who uh, we both stepped off together, and we kind of wanted to see if, what they are going to do. We proceeded to kind of, from a distance, follow behind one of the guys, and we saw this guy get on his cell phone. He must have been calling the other undercover cop because soon thereafter, a big guy in an orange shirt approached us and said, why are you following us? He talked to us for a while. He threatened Kevin, I mentioned before. Uh, he threatened Kevin uh, with a punch in the face, and uh, he ended up pulling me by the shirt. We were close to an intersection, pulling me by the shirt kind of halfway across the street that I was crossing into uh, uniform cops at that corner and said, these guys are following us. Uh, we want you to talk to them. So then, you know, we, we ended up having to each individually, but talking to different uniformed police officers about 
what we were doing. Essentially, I, mean, I was lucky I was a credentialed journalist, but if you're an uncredentialed journalist or if you're a credentialed journalist here in Charlotte doing any type of critical reporting, uh, you're kind of at risk of getting kicked out or, uh, I don't know, you know, just, there's, just, there's just not an atmosphere of a place where critical journalism is really allowed. But what were we doing? We, we noticed something that was, you know, potentially, uh, you know, a very important thing that undercover officers are taking photos of undocumented immigrants. What are they, what are they doing with these photos? Are they using the photos to have these undocumented immigrants deported? Uh, there are 400,000 undocumented immigrants deported in 2011. So you know, these are things that the journalists should be able to report on and question and do the, do these types of things. But, you know, uh, for Kevin and I, it got us, we had to talk to police for just basically doing journalism. And then going back to NATO, yeah, it's a, there's a broader, deeper uh, sort of silencing of critical journalism. Reporting for The Real News, this is Jessel Noor. 